Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sean Salami. Thank you for joining me again this week. Right. So somebody is asking me here, this person happens to be female and she's, she's actively involved in the church choir. She, she's committed and all of those things and she, she even leads worship occasionally. And then, um, but on the other side of it is uh, academics are beginning to suffer for it. Okay, so she she has to go for choir practice a lot of times, you know, does all of these different activities that don't give her enough time to to study and and get good grades in school. So what what should she do? You know? Wow. Okay. Now for me this is this is really very straightforward, right? It it sounds uh, a bit com complicated, but it's really not complicated. Okay. At at a certain stage in your life, and this is what I always say, I have I've said this consistently. I've, I've said this personally to people who have had the privilege to, to coach and to counsel, right? That for you to achieve success in your academics, at a particular period of time in your life, when you're a student, the first thing in your life is the fact that you're a student. And I've said this over and over again, that the, the, the word student comes from the word study. And if you're not actively studying, you're not a student. Any other thing in your life at that particular period of time is secondary now this is where people get this mixed up you almost sometimes feel like your activity in church is equivalent to your relationship with god but that is not correct your activity in church is not a definition of your relationship with god it has it has listen your relationship with god is one thing right your activity in church is an expression of that relationship should be an expression of that relationship but where people get it twisted is that they feel like if they are active in church, then it means that they are godly people. It means that they have a good relationship with God. But this is not the case. What God is interested in is to have a personal relationship with Him. Does it mean that being active in church is wrong? Absolutely not. It is, it is a beautiful thing. You have to be active in church. You have to be committed to the work of God. You have to take part in God's work you know, and be active there. But when you're being active in church, is now going to be affecting your academics. You would have to sit down and tell yourself, at this point in my life, what is my priority? What is my number one priority? Number one priority for you is God. That means your personal relationship with God, your personal fellowship with God, your, your communion with God there, you and God personally first. Then the next thing has to be your academics. It has to be your studies. You have to sit down and tell yourself that if you continue on this path, you know, and you keep you know, doing these activities that you are doing that don't give you time to study, you will fail. And if you fail, you're not even representing the brand of God well. Now, you're, you're going to be the Christian guy or the Christian girl who is failing. That's what you're going to be, right? So you need to sit down and tell yourself that this is not even going to be good or for the name of the church that you are active in. Because they're going to say that, oh, which, this, this girl that is always singing in the church, or oh, she's the one that, that dropped out of school, or she's the one that they kicked out of school, or she's the one that is getting all these bad grades, right? So you will need to sit down and tell yourself that at this period of my life, the, the most important thing right now is for me to sit down in school, study, get good results, okay? When you're done with that, you, can, you will sing for the rest of your life. You can sing till you are 80 if you want to, right? And nobody's going to stop you from doing that. But the, your academics have been taken care of. You've sorted out one aspect of your life is done it's complete right and when you're done with that you can now face other things and face them with all of your heart and face them with all of your might i don't think god will be angry with you if you don't you don't come to choir practice because you have to study for an exam i mean that's that's just common sense and i don't i don't need to preach that to you and you, the reason why your parents sent you to school is not to be in the choir but to study in school and I've, i gave you an example of one time in another video that I did, I gave you an example of a friend of mine when we were in school. While I was the pastor of the fellowship in school, she was in, in, in school. She was a Christian. I could see that this lady was a Christian because there's a way you will see people and you will know that this one has you know, the, the values of a Christian. And I approached her. Like, Why don't you want to come to the school fellowship, right? Can you join us for fellowship this week you know, and, and all of that? And she made it clear to me that, you see, I have a goal here. My number one goal in this school is to come out with a first class. If I get involved in any other activity, and it doesn't, it's not just about school fellowship, it could be any other thing, right? It could be dance, it could be drama, it could be anything else, it could be a social club, whatever it is. If I get involved in that, I'm not going to be able to achieve this goal, right? So I can't do it. You might be able to do school fellowship. Maybe, you know, you have the grace for it. Maybe you have a, a, a 
covenant with God about that, you know, and, and I, I actually did because I said to God, but if I'm going to be committed to this, right, then you have to take care of my, the results part of my academics. You can do that one, but it's not everybody that is at that point, not everybody is at that level. Okay, I, I could, in my final year in school, I can, I can count how many times I actually went to classes to sit down, you know, because by then I already had a job, I, I, I did industrial attachment in my third year and I got employed, right, so in my fourth year I was act actively working, right, I was, I was almost always in the newsroom, in the magazine where I was working, right, and I would go to lectures occasionally, you know, but I made sure I, I always read, I, at least I made sure of that, right, so I, I had that ability and I could do that, but she couldn't do it. And she made it clear that I can't do this, okay? And I, I, didn't, I didn't blacklist her for that or, or, you know, start going on about, oh, you're not a good Christian because you're not coming to the fellowship. No. It, doesn't, it has nothing to do with it, right? Your priority is your academic. Stay with that one if you know that you cannot do the two together, okay? Where it's, it's, it's now it's, it becomes a problem is when you are, you are, you are trying to, to balance everything and it's not working and you now fail. Or you are you now drop out of school, then you are not even representing God well. So you you must you must understand that 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 is a very dicey mix there, right? And and you don't want to be the Christian girl who is who is failing or who is dropping out of school, right? Okay. But this this again is not an excuse. If if you know that you have you have time to to still do you know activities in church, you maybe you need to tune it down a bit. Maybe you need to you know reduce the number of times that you you lead worship or you have to go for rehearsals and let them understand that you know I'm I'm in school I have to do this and all of that. And I don't think anybody's going to blame you for that or anybody's going to say you are not a good Christian because you, you can't be as committed as they are to the things of God because you are you are in school and they are not in school they they are done with school they are working right and they have their time they can manage their own time. Right? So you you must look at this critically. If you're out there and you're in this situation, please reach out to me. I would like to still, you know, follow up with you. If there's anything I, that I left out that I, I, didn't, I didn't really touch on. Okay, thank you so much. If you have any questions that you would like me to answer, you can always reach out to me on Facebook or on Instagram. My Facebook is Sheon Salami. I have a Facebook profile and I have a Facebook page, right? And on Instagram and Twitter, it's at Sheon Writes. And you can send me direct messages and... I would be glad to respond to you. Thank you so much for watching the video. Like the video if you do and subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed so that you will know when I have a new video out. I usually have new videos out on Fridays at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here in Canada. And if you're in Nigeria, that is 5 a.m. on Saturday morning every week, I have a new video out. Check out some of the other awesome videos I have on the channel. Till I see you guys again next week. Thank you. God bless you.